Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Good, good, good. You should all be at your least crankiest that I'm ever going to encounter you. Because you, you've all had an extra hour's sleep, right? So you should all be in a good mood. Everyone needs to, I've got no excuses for a bad mood today. You should all be at your best. Today's the day, the one day of the year, all right? An extra hour's sleep on Sunday morning. woo Well, good morning to you all. Blessings as we meet. It's great to be gathered. If we haven't met before, I'm, um, my name's Graham. I'm the minister here at uh, Coromel Uniting. So whether you're with us in the room or online, it's, uh, it's great to be gathered this morning. Just want to make a mention of a couple of things. We've had a couple of last minute um, replacements. We've got some guest spots that have come up today um, because, uh, just keep in mind Wendy, how Wendy has uh, got a blood clot in her leg. She's okay, but, um, but on top of some things that aren't going well for her, she, um, she's got a blood clot, so just keep her in mind. And Gary was, and, and Wendy was on the reading, and Gary um, has had a time, some time in hospital this week, and Gary isn't well, and he was on prayers. So uh, you, I won't name who, we'll have some nice little surprise guest spots uh, as replacements. Um, but we, we're thinking of you both, uh, Wendy and Gary, if you're with us online, and um, pray for quick recovery. So let's steady and ready ourselves for God to meet us here this morning. I know this time is called worship, but what also should be going on in this time is not just us offering worship to God, but we should be open to God meeting us. We should be open to God leading us and calling us. We should be ready for God with us, disturbing us, disrupting us, moving us for this coming week. So my friends, as we gather, uh, may we draw closer to the kingdom of God here with us, which will in turn draw us closer to life. We're going to acknowledge country. As we gather, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today, the Dharawal people. We pay respects to elders past present and future, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people of this land. Lord, may your work be done in reconciliation and justice. And each week as we ready and steady ourselves and prepare ourselves, we light a Christ candle. So I'm wondering if there's someone who would like to come and light the Christ candle. Yes, Barbara. Oh, Janice, sorry, that's Janice. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Janice. We light the Christ candle this morning, declaring the Lord is our strength, our light, and our salvation. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let's stand together and sing Hosanna. It's a song for Palm Sunday in many ways, so, and today is Palm Sunday.
Let's come to God in prayer. Loving God, as the psalmist declares, we give thanks for your steadfast love that endures forever. So Lord, we pray for your coming kingdom built on your enduring love and on peace. Lord, we pray, Hosanna, save us into this way, into your way. Lord, we know sometimes rather than telling of your steadfast love that endures forever, it is sometimes more familiar or easier to settle for a way of telling your story where your love is conditional or transactional or selective, where only a few are chosen or where who we are and what we do or don't believe somehow determines whether you love us or not. And Lord, rather than telling of your steadfast love that endures forever, sometimes it's far more familiar and easier to tell your story in a way that upholds that you are powerful and mighty, but that power and might are used for vengeance and retributive justice, retribution. That you are able to wipe out any enemy, especially when we are able to name that enemy and especially, doubly especially, when that enemy also happens to be our enemy. Lord, we pray for love and we pray for peace. And Lord, rather than telling of your steadfast love that endures forever, Lord, sometimes it's much more familiar or easy for or easier for us to tell your story in a way where you are angry and slow to forgive. Where our wrongdoing forever puts us on your bad side. On the other side of that, sometimes we hold to your story in a way where we are never the one in the wrong, never needing forgiveness from you or from others. You know, when Jesus talks of forgiveness, surely he means people other than me. Surely he meant other people. Lord, forgive us, we pray. And we pray for love and for peace. This morning, Lord, gather us, embrace us, hold us, so that we might tell of your story in this all-embracing, inclusive, steadfast, loving way that endures forever. 
This morning, Lord, we do lift up your name with praise on our hearts. We praise you for your steadfast love that endures forever. We declare Hosanna. We pray, Lord, save us. Lord, we seek your coming kingdom. We pray for love. We pray for peace. And Lord, might it make a start within us and through us on this day. By your spirit and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, I invite you, if you're able, to stand. We're going to pass the peace. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Friends, may you know peace and may you be a blessing of peace in the name of the Lord for all those around. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you. I invite you to pass the peace with those around you. Ruth's going to bring our reading this morning. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. I wasn't game to use the steps, not at the first time up here anyway. The reading today is from Matthew 21, 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road And others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to This morning's reading is set in the week leading in or at the beginning of the week leading into the Passover festival. In the Jewish faith there were and there still are seven different festivals. Four of them are mentioned in the, North, in the New Testament. It'll be a really tough trivia question for me to get you to name all four um, and I won't do that. But, but of particular importance is the Passover festival. And at the Passover festival, 
people came into the city of Jerusalem to the temple. It was a pilgrimage festival. Jesus would have, we know Jesus went with his family as a child and we know it's implied that Jesus went at least the three times of his public ministry also went to Jerusalem three, up, you know, three times over three different years. And Passover was a festival where the Jewish people were remembering and celebrating their escape and deliverance from slavery in Egypt. That was the religious aspect of the festival. But the festival was so much more. It was a spectacular. During the, during, historians tell us that, when, that during the, festo- the Passover festival, the population of Jerusalem grew from um, about 30,000, 20 or 30,000 people up to about 150,000 people. Even Airbnb wouldn't be able to cope with the number of people who were coming into town seeking somewhere to stay. But, all of the, but then, of course, the festival itself, because it went for about a week, it attracted a whole bunch of other people as well. Not just religious pilgrims, but there were people there to make money out of religious pilgrims and everybody else who came along. So there were all kinds of stall holders, traders, artisans. Um, money changes was part of it. The money changing went on um, because people were coming from outside of uh, normal monetary boundaries and they needed their money exchanged into, into currency that was good, um, which might make sense when, when Jesus goes into the temple during this week to turn over the tables. There were beggars everywhere as well, probably as well. There's a whole bunch of things going on that, um, that, that, as I say, made this an extravaganza. And during the festival, whilst it was a religious festival, it held a whole bunch of other meaning or a whole bunch of other opportunities. So there was lots of business going on. There were people making money out of um, all sorts of transactions, food, entertainment, um, the religious observance, you, you might even remember like from the stories that, that um, people were buying and selling doves and that sort of thing. So, so there's this whole, people were making money out of religious observance. Um, sometimes those things were interchanged, interchangeable. So you, you'd have to believe that the religious uh, leaders were making money on the side simply even just from the story that said that the temple was open to the money changers. So the religious leaders would have been in cahoots with some of the business people to be getting their own pockets lined as well. And this all happened once a year, every year. Now, apart from being a religious business entertainment extravaganza, the festival of Pas- the Passover festival also attracted political and military movement. You see, the Jewish people were part of the Roman Empire of the time. And whilst Roman leadership tolerated Jewish activity, Jewish religious activity, they kept a very close eye on the festivals. And they were keeping a close eye for unrest, for uprisings, they were keeping a close eye for trouble. Of course, they probably enjoyed the entertainment. They probably enjoyed some of the spectacle themselves. But I'm leaning into the work of two New Testament scholars, uh, John Dominic Crossan and Marcus Borg, when I tell you this, that, that Rome at these times in Jewish life put their foot down a little tighter. The Roman governor of Judea, who at the time was Pilate, um, would come up from the coastal residents. I mean, who doesn't want to live by the sea, right? And that's where he spent a fair bit of his time, especially in the warmer months. But for Passover, he would come up. And that coming up from the sea meant he was coming in from the west. And he would come into Jerusalem via the West Gate. 
And you can only presume that this would have been some sort of militaristic show. Pilate would have come up from the west, from the coast, to be in Jerusalem as a show of power, as a show of strength, as a show of control, as a way of warning anybody who was thinking about causing a little bit of trouble, it was a way of saying, we're here to show you the consequence. Don't even try it. To any renegade or any recalcitrant, here was your warning. Rome is in charge. Have your fun. Do your religious whatever it is, do it. But don't forget, Rome is in charge. They would have come up. Carriages, stallions, soldiers, armoury, spears, shields. It would have had some sense of military precision about it, most likely. It would have had order. And it probably would have been done in silence. Which is why today's reading should hit us in the heart. It's why today's reading should hit us in the guts. It's why today's reading should shake us a little. Because what Jesus is saying here is Rome isn't in charge. Rome may have some control. Rome may have have the ability to snuff you out. But there's another way here, friends. You see, Jesus knew, sometimes there's, there's, there's a risk of reading this passage as a sort of like just an impromptu, oh yeah, Jesus suddenly had a thought. I'm going to get a donkey. I'm going to ride into town on a donkey. I'm going to put on a bit of a show. Or I'm going to be a king. And I'm going to show, and, and all, you know, I, I know, you know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, whatever it is, this is not impromptu. You have to sense that Jesus has been planning this for a while. As an upside down way of showing power. Instead of coming in through the west gate, Jesus comes in through the south gate. He's coming from his friend's place at at Bethpage, which is kind of south of the city. Instead of riding on a stallion as a way of saying, this is me, I'm the other, I'm the real king, what Jesus is saying is I'm the other king. There will always be the empire, but I am the other way. I am the other king. And so rather than riding on a stallion, He's riding on a donkey. Instead of demanding silence, instead of enforcing control, we're told that Jesus comes in humility. Instead of weapons, instead of shields, instead of spears, instead of the threat of of punishment, Jesus comes, armed, if you like, with peace and love and the hope of life. 
instead of silence, instead of that sense of awe and fear, Jesus comes into town with a whole bunch of people throwing their cloaks off, cheering, shouting, this hopeful cry, Hosanna, save us, save us, save us. There would have been a time when I would have preached this passage from a place of victory over. As if the kingdom of God snuffs out the powers of this world. I've come to learn that the cry of Hosanna, the cry of save us, comes from a people oppressed, comes from a people who struggle in poverty or disadvantage. This cry of Hosanna comes from people that you and I know. 2,000 years later, as well as in Jesus' time, I've come to learn that the kingdom of God doesn't replace the empire. The empire still exists. But what I have come to learn is that the power of this passage is found when I and you choose to take up this parallel parallel way of being, to place ourselves in the other kingdom, to choose to be subjects of the way of Jesus. When we choose the way of love, of peace, of kindness, of generosity, when we choose the way of justice and mercy and compassion, that is the kingdom of God, alive and well and flourishing in you and I. So in this same way that Jesus hears this cry, Hosanna, save us. I know we hear that cry in our midst as God's people hear. And I know we respond. And I, and I'm, I guess I'm challenging you that when you get beyond our four walls, that this kingdom only lives when you and I choose to take it on. God's kingdom flourishes when you and I choose to become its subjects. You know, the story kind of finishes with Jesus coming in through the south gate with all the noise and all the the kind of almost, as I said in my note this week, almost theatre of it all. With all the cheering and the shouting. And the people inside the gates say, what's going on? What is this? Who is this? And the answer wouldn't have been any clearer for the people. It wouldn't have made any sense to them. They're told it's Jesus. This is Jesus, the Nazarene from from Galilee. That wouldn't have made any sense to them. They may as well have just said it's Fred Bloggs.
It doesn't answer the question. But by the end of that week, by the end of that week, we do know that Jesus is known. The question that we have to ask ourselves, or the question that the crowd asks, if you like, is who is this that agitates? Who is this that disrupts? Who is this that provokes? For a different way. And for you and I, the answer, of course, is Jesus. Not Fred Bloggs. It's Jesus. And so this Easter, like any other Easter that's gone before, you and I, through this passage of scripture, but through the rest of the passages that come set in this week, we're invited, we're called to follow in this way, to to choose this kingdom in the midst of the empire around us, We're challenged to disrupt and up and and take on an upheaval in our lives to choose a different way. Day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute, breath after breath. This different way is there for us to take. The way of life. And as we learn from Jesus this week, we're called to follow no matter what the cost. Amen. We're going to sing. And I love the song we're about to sing. I love a lot of the songs we sing, most of them, all of them. This song we're going to sing is How Long? Because this song nails down fairly clearly for us what does living within the kingdom of God look like? This is one of those songs that kind of names it for us. How long?
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. Uh, on behalf of our church council and our teams of elders and pastoral carers, uh, to everybody here in the room and also watching online, our new sheet has again been published for us this week and uh, is available both in online form and hard copy. Um, our addresses are posted about here. Um, if you would like to get in touch with us. A couple of highlights out of the uh, new sheet. Um, for people here in the room, our congregational meeting, the first for the year will be uh, held um, after our worship session here. Um, an announcement as we've started Holy Week, um, Thursday night are, is our first um, official meeting for uh, worship times. Um, the request is still there for people who are taking part in that activity. If uh, they could let uh, Graham and Sandra know we've got, uh, if they're bringing some soup as part of that sharing uh, event. Uh, our Friday, Good Friday service at 9.30 here in the worship space and again on Easter Sunday here in the worship space. Uh, at 9.30 and our Exploring the Faith group will be meeting as usual um, about 5 o'clock uh, on Sunday evening. So that will be... It's on tonight. It's all right. The way I read that, it was part of Easter. My apologies for misreading. So yes, it's tonight, folks. So uh, Exploring our Faith is, uh, is always highly regarded for uh, digging deeper into worship activities. So uh, on that point, we're going to hand over to Graham and then our Lauren, prayer time. Just have a seat for a second, Lauren. Um, I, I, every so often I have this privilege of getting to hear a story or two from our life and, and Jan has a couple from the op shop this week. So where are you, Jan? I just thought I'd get Jan to come and share. Um, there's some really lovely stories. This is about, I t we share these stories because it's about us hitting mission. Like it's about us being part of, for people, forming connection and community. So Jan, I'm... Please come. One day uh, a lady came into the shop, an elderly lady, and she spent a lot of time just wandering around and looking over the top of the um, clothes and looking at us and smiling. And, and it seemed, something seemed a bit odd, but we didn't take much notice of it. And she came to the counter and she started to speak, but we couldn't understand a word she was saying. And she asked for... A, a pencil and a paper and she wrote down, I have had a stroke and my throat is paralysed, I can't talk. And we sort of said, oh, that's wonderful, you look so well, you're so brave coming out on your own um, and doing your own shopping. And I said to her, well, my mum had a stroke when she was 82 and she lived till she was 90. And Pauline that I, that I was on with said to her, my brother had a stroke last year and he's doing really, really well. Anyway, I said to her, my doctor said that years ago, people were very slow to recover from strokes, but with modern medication and, and plenty of exercise, people are doing really well. And then she wrote, I'm going to a special exercise class, and Pauline beside said, oh, that's exactly the same class that my brother goes to as well. And she got a great big grin on her face and she, off she went. And another little story, there's um, a lady in a wheelchair, uh, no, walker, who lives at the top of the hill, um, there's over 55 um, single women units. And she comes down quite regularly and sh she came in and uh, she said, um, I love coming in here, she said, all the girls are so friendly, I get lonely up there with nobody to talk to. And she was really nicely dressed and the lady that I was working with said, oh, gee, you look so nice today. She said, I love that jacket. She said, well, as a matter of fact, I bought it in the op shop. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I said, it was one that I donated. <laughs> Good morning. Today has two features. One daylight saving changed. The other one is Palm Sunday. I'm not the only person because I've heard other people commenting, I won't say complaining, commenting during the last week about how dark it was in the morning when it was time to get up. This morning there was light. 
So, from Australian Prayers by Bruce Prewer, published by the Lutherans, I've got Thanksgiving for Light. Most wonderful God, we thank you for the gift of light, for its power to cheer us, enliven us, encourage us and guard us, for the sun rising over the ocean and calling us to a new day, for moonlight and starlight, stirring a sense of wonder and serenity within us, for street light, car light, traffic light, protecting and guiding us, for the beauty of city lights viewed from the hills, for the beauty of affection lighting the faces of those who love us, for the light of human compassion in hospitals, nursing homes and counselling agencies, for the supreme light of divine love in the face of the man of Nazareth, for the radiance of Christ's goodness, grace and self-sacrifice, for his light in his church, exposing, challenging, and showing us the way to new creation. For his radiance in our individual lives, uncovering, rebuking, forgiving, renewing, and guiding us. Most wonderful God, we praise you for the light of the world. Most merciful God, we praise you for the sun that is never eclipsed. God of light, God of God, light of light, glory be to you and forever. And for Palm Sunday, when I read the headings in the book, these two jumped out at me. Most loving God, we confess that we are in danger of making Palm Sunday a ceremony rather than allowing it to be an event in our lives. Have mercy. If we sing our hosannas within the safety of this church, but rarely in public life, life, Christ have mercy, that our timidity may be transformed into courage and our indifference turned into costly love, Lord have mercy. We thank you, O God, for giving Jesus the word of forgiveness, the gospel of hope and the grace of a new creation. Hosanna. Blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We are grateful for the assurance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hosanna, Christ be the na blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Thanks, Lorraine. We're going to sing. Uh, just a question without notice, if you like. Um, not for you, Lorraine. Sorry, is there any... Like, last week, I know the kids did some craft that I thought was fantastic, and I have got didn't get a chance to share that. So maybe we'll sing, and then I'm going to ask in a moment for um, if someone wants to bring something up that they've been working on, uh, or if there's... A, if what last week's one is... One, one of the last week's ones there, that'd be great. All right. We are going to sing... It is a, a song that most of you probably don't know, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a Good Friday kind of, sorry, it's a uh, Palm Sunday kind of song. And I'm just going to give you a heads up. Is my microphone still on if I walk this way? Yes, all right. So um, it's, it's a song that has a refrain. Kyle, can you put the refrain up for us, if that's all right? It's the, there it is, so the refrain. So it's a, it's, a, it's a song, it's a line, then a response, okay? So I'll just sing it for you. And uh, it goes, make way, make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Kings, for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, make way, make way, and let his kingdom in. That's how it goes. Now, on our music, it says men and women. Um, in this day and age, and I don't mean to make light of this, but if you, uh, if you identify as a male, then you may want to go first. If you identify as a female, then you can sing the second part. If you just identify as someone who's a latecomer to responses in songs, then feel free to sing the second part, not the first part, all right? So let's, um, let's uh, sing together, make way. Man. 
time I did say, is there, has anyone got anything they want to come and bring up and show us from today? Yes, yes, no, yeah. Yes, I think that's a yes. Good. Do you want to share what you've got there, Rebecca? No, you don't want to share? Can I, can I have a look? That's okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's a task. Oh, you know what these are? Can you tell me what that is? It's a palm tree. It's a palm branch. Do you ever want to hold the palm branches up? Do you want to hold it up for us so we can all see? There we go. There we go. We've got our palm branches up. Fantastic. There we go. Hosanna. Hosanna. I'll let you hold yours up. There you go. Fantastic. And Isabel did a drawing. Do you want to come and share with us what you've drawn? Yeah. There's a stand there if you want it. I made a drawing for my class. It's called Three for Esperanga. And we're using it and we're making, and Baranga is like an island, it stands for island in Sydney. It's, it's halfly called for Barangaroo in Sydney, but, but it's just halfly for Baranga. So. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks uh, for sharing uh, that. For, uh, for Aboriginal people. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, oh no, okay. <laughs> All right, my friends. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, did you want to share? Did you want to say something? Or, or, no, all right. All right, well, you can stay seated for the offertory prayer and for the commissioning today. That's okay. Let's pray. God, we give thanks for your goodness in our lives always, every day. There's something to be thankful for. So, Lord, today we bring our offerings as our way of saying thank you the offering of our, of our gifts of, t- of our money, but also of our time, our gifts and our lives. Lord, we pray they will be used for your kingdom, for the work of your kingdom in the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, go forth in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Honour all people. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Help the afflicted. Support the weak. And in so doing, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.